Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now they said that postal services would be delayed during this period but 14 years later and my Pentium 4 finally arrived. Time to unbox it and play all of my favourite games. Seriously though, I found this old chip on eBay in its original condition and despite going untampered with for the last decade and a half, I decided to be the one who finally let it out of the box. I apologise to every hardware collector out there who might cringe at this, especially the condition that I left the box in, but it's time to remove this old thing from its factory sealed packaging. The Pentium 4 641 launched in 2006, so it was one of the last in the notorious lineup and as such featured hyper threading. Instead of one core and one thread, it has one core and two threads, though these days I don't think that will save it. This particular model cost around 218 US dollars, so it wasn't exactly cheap, but considering some earlier versions retailed for triple that price, it may have been a more tempting buy. Let's not forget though, that the Core 2 Duo CPU lineup started appearing just a few months later. So that could explain why this one never got sold or was never opened. It was possibly stocked on a shelf somewhere, though it spent its days surplus to anyone's requirements. It's a sad story really, but don't worry little buddy, I'm here to save you. So I don't know what it is about original hardware like this, but finding old components inside their original packaging really does get me quite excited for whatever reason. I guess it's just part and parcel of being a hardware collector. Uh, what I especially like is that, of course, because this is a brand new chip, we get the original documentation and the Pentium 4 sticker, a sticker that everyone would have wanted back in the early 2000s. I will certainly be reading this later on. I wonder if the three-year warranty still stands. I'll have to find that out. I'll contact someone at Intel and see what they can do. So, let's get the fan out of the packaging first. So it's not that I have anything against modern Intel coolers, they do an adequate job of cooling, but these older ones just look so much better. This one doesn't have the copper base, but it is quite chunky, it's a very nice looking fan, and of course the Pentium 4s were notoriously for running warm, so including one like this was totally necessary in the box. Let's move on to the processor itself. Here it is, the Pentium 4 641. I like the little protective layer on the back of the chip now. This isn't something you see either today, although they are usually wrapped in a little bit of plastic. I think I'm just as excited undoing it these days as I would have been a decade and a half ago. I'm like a kid on Christmas here. So here is everything laid out on the table. Apologies for the now condition of the box. I wasn't quite sure how to open it. Opening boxes was apparently more complicated back in 2006 too. But yeah, here we have the nice chunky heatsink fan combination, the Pentium processor and the documentation. As you can see, thermal paste is also applied here. So this is ready to install in our system. Now I'm going to be using the PC featured a couple of videos ago, which has a socket 775 board already in place along with four gigs of RAM. Though I will update this to eight gigs of RAM and I want to see if Windows 10 works with this processor as well. It should do from what I've read. So as you can see, I've put the CPU in the board here. Um, I tested it before swapping out the graphics card just to see that everything booted up. And my intentions here aren't to test many games. I did give Crisis a go later on. My intentions here were simply to see if this chip worked and thankfully it does. If we go across and take a look at the temperature as well under the hardware monitor section, yeah, just as I thought, it's running at about 44 degrees, which is pretty much spot on for these chips. I then uh, swapped out the 8600 GTS for a 1080 Ti, which just about fit inside this case. And I also added my one terabyte SSD. Now, as you can imagine, the initial boot up was quite horrendous. It took a good 15, 20 minutes to configure our hardware here. But once that was all done and we were into Windows, well, I wasn't quite sure what to expect until I started trying to use the machine. So it really didn't take much for the system to freeze. Windows 10 is not the optimum operating system here. I simply wanted to see if this chip worked and I guess you could say it does run Windows 10, just not very well. Now I was a little ambitious to say the least with my first game test here. This was Battlefield 1, my attempt at running it anyway. 
and the system completely froze. Not just the game, but the system too. More on this a little later. I then decided to see if the good old fashioned classic Crisis would run, and it actually did. It didn't matter whether we used the low or medium settings, or the high or ultra for that fact, because it ran the same all of the time due to the CPU bottleneck. So I should probably say here that the GTX 1080 Ti is not a good pairing for this chip, but I do plan on putting together a sort of ultimate Pentium 4 build in the very near future. I just wanted to see if the chip worked, and in this case, I'm happy to report that it does. There were a couple of freezes with Crisis. I think pairing it with something a little more, you know, sensible, maybe an older 550 Ti, something that's got a little bit of power to it, but something that's not going to totally overwhelm the rest of the system, something that's going to let our Pentium 4 reach its maximum potential, but not absolutely cripple performance like this. I think the uh, the 1080 Ti is just way too much in this case, but yeah, Crisis does run uh, with about 12 frames per second here. I do think there is a lot more configuring that we can do in order to get games to run more smoothly as well, and hopefully we'll add a different operating system to this machine, either Windows XP or Windows 7. I think that will really benefit this machine as well. So maybe we'll have an Ultimate Pentium 4 or Ultimate Windows 7 slash Pentium 4 machine uh, video coming out too. So there we go. Now, this video was never really about testing the gaming performance of the Pentium 4 in 2020. I think the situation wasn't quite set up right because um, the GTX 1080 Ti was far too powerful. I mean, we were in Bottleneck City, their population, one idiot and his CPU collection. But yeah, the, uh, the, the system really wasn't set up for gaming today. It's a total mismatch. What I do plan to do is pair the Pentium 4 with something far better suited to it, something that's not going to create an extreme bottleneck straight away. I mean, most GPUs will do that, most modern ones, when paired with a single core, two threaded chip. But yeah, I wanna create a sort of ultimate Pentium 4 build. Maybe we'll throw some liquid cooling in the system as well, just because uh, we'll also pair it with some better memory, maybe eight gigs of Corsair XMS if I can find any of that stuff. That stuff seemed to be what people used to recommend back in the day. And then we'll test far more games as well. We'll see what this chip can really do when paired with a more suitable graphics card and perhaps when using a less intensive operating system. As I record this part of the video, Battlefield 1 is still trying to load. Um, we're still at the loading screen. Oh, it's just frozen now. The uh, the game's just frozen, it's given up altogether, and so has the computer, it would seem. Uh, yeah, the cursor's jammed. Yeah, we're not really getting anywhere with that. But Windows 10 runs, if you want to use a Pentium 4 on Windows 10, it will run, but it won't be a very pleasant experience, to say the least. And now the game is trying to run in 4K, and it's closed, it's crashed. <laughs> so there we go, the Pentium 4, a brand new Pentium 4, from 2006. I hope you've enjoyed this sort of unboxing video and uh, hopefully you can join me next time when we test the chip properly and configure the ultimate Pentium 4 gaming machine. If you enjoyed this video leave a like on it down below, leave a dislike if you didn't, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.